Okay, so... Let's look at few ideas, examine them, yes? Mm. The wise brought knowledge and the knowledge is uh, like a medicine for the mind and because knowledge is not affected by time yeah, means it was 10,000 years ago and it would be 10,000 years from now and it applies till now therefore um, it described the, the universal law of nature or the universal law of the mind it's not personal, nobody owns it yes the wise used three states the waking state, dreaming state and deep sleep state okay, these three states really help the mind discriminate wake up from this dream let's look at right now dreaming state and waking state just between these two states the dreaming state while the mind is dreaming basically it's only a subtle world inner world okay subtle means thoughts yeah in the dreaming state we lose all the objective world we lose all the objects of the world so far it's clear um losing the objects of the world in the I guess I don't follow that. Okay. In the waking state, the five senses are open, right? Oh, yeah. And now we perceive the objects of the world. Okay. In the I dreaming would... state, the five senses close down and we lose all the objects of the world. And now we have an inner world which is subtle, just thoughts, images, visions. The mind is yeah. active, dreaming. Yes? Means in the dreaming state, all there is is the dream world. There is no objective world. I do not, I do not know if I have a house, money, eh, sick, healthy, none of it, of the bodily and gross objects. Yes? Now, in the dreaming, what happens the mind identify with the thought and the dream appears totally real right that's the experience mm -hmm. now when I wake up from the dream what do I realize that it was just a dream right and that the dream was not real nothing that what I was thinking and dreaming happened none of it I might dream that I walk on a beach, yet the body lies in London in a bed. I dream that I speak with somebody that is no, no longer alive. In the dream it's possible. When I wake up, I realize none of it happened. Right? That enables us to see that when I wake up from the dream, no matter how bad the dream was, I'm freed from it when I realize it was not real. Yes? Yeah. The other thing we can come and see is that anything that happened in the dream does not really meet the reality, life. Because none of it happened in life. Therefore, thoughts never meet life. So we don't know what life is. So life will call right now, let's say it's the reality, what is happening through the five senses. Yes? Okay. Means whatever thoughts we have in the moment, it's not ever happening in reality in life. I'm just imagining it. Therefore, all the fears I have never happen. because I'm afraid of something in the future yet reality is happening only right now so 
what I'm afraid of is not happening right now. I'll give an example. Let's say I see a snake. It's two meters from me. The snake is not moving and I'm not moving now. I'm afraid that the, the snake would go towards me and sting me. Right? Yet the snake is there and I'm here standing. So I'm afraid that something gonna happen. It's not happening. An idea. Yeah. Now the snake comes and sting me. Now I'm afraid that I'm not gonna get to the hospital by time. Means it's already moved to the future yet it's not happening because I'm not in the hospital. Once I get to the hospital, I'm afraid that they're gonna have to cut my leg. I have still a leg. So it's always moving into the dream. Fear is a dream, is an illusion. It's never a real thing. And it never meets the reality, ever. And I agree with that. And I, I, uh, and that, that's my visual experience. I see that it's a play or a movie or a whatever. Okay, so the thought never manifests. The reality unless we are trapped in the dream we believe there is a future right. and that's another habit because the habit of the mind is to dream and then the habit is to believe that what I dream is real so I believe that there is a past and I believe that there is a future Yet I imagine the past and the future in the moment and none of it happening. The content of the thought is of the past, the content of the thought is of the future, yet I might be standing in a bus stop. Nothing to do with what happened during the day today, which I remember, or nothing with what I imagine I'm going to eat for dinner, which has not happened yet because the body is standing in the bus stop. Okay? So this is the ability to discriminate. The mind has to have the ability to discriminate between imagination and what's happening in reality. And then it between imagination and who you truly are, which is silence. Okay? So we go back Whatever we imagine never meets reality, ever. Whether it's fears or whether it's positive thoughts. Okay? Oh. And, and the problem with positive thoughts is the moment you have a hope for them, you get attached to them. Once you keep feeding, getting attached to thoughts like that, you're going to get attached to negative thoughts too. Because the positive and negative, they just follow each other and cancel each other. So it's a trap. You have to step out of it, of this illusion. And stepping out of it is to first recognize who you are, which is the beingness, which is absolutely still. It is absolute, has no relative existence, nor it has no relationship with any thoughts sensation emotions world nothing to do with that it's not a human it is it is the source and we're afraid of that right i mean i have moments when i wake up in the middle of the night and i know none of it's real and i feel fear <laughs> except that this is a trick of the mind you're not afraid of the beingness of who you are because you are the beingness of who you are. The mind doesn't know that. So what happens, it imagines something that scares itself. Because the mind cannot exist in the beingness of who you are, when you rest in the beingness of who you are. So what happens is that the mind scares itself and then it appears to be more real and then you identify as a separate entity. Yet you're not afraid of experiencing who you are because every night everyone are looking 
forward to fall asleep into deep sleep when the thoughts subside into the source. There's just still there is a veiling there. So what happens there is the wise call it ignorance and bliss. Ignorance, I don't remember what happened when there was dreamless state. And bliss, I slept happily when I wake up. Yet the I thought was not present there. So what happens when you start to experience who you are in the waking state, then there is no ignorance. And then you experience the bliss, supreme bliss of the silence which is you. Let's go back to the dreaming state and the waking state. In the dream, if you have a nightmare and you wake up from the dream and you realize it was just a dream, are you freed from it? Yeah, I would think so. Of course. Instantaneously you're freed from it. What can happen? You still have bodily sensation, emotions because of the identification. If you don't react to the bodily sensation, there is no problem. You're freed. Okay? If you don't want the bodily sensation, now you resist it, the mind reacts to it, there is a false identification there. Okay? That's where you can come with the phrase and the question. Okay? I shouldn't have this emotion, is it true? I shouldn't experience what I experience right now, is it true? I know what's best for me, is it true? I'm a physical form, is it true? I'm a separate entity, is it true? I'm not the beingness which is absolutely aware, is it true? Thoughts are real, is it true? I'm the one who's thinking this thought, is it true? Without the thought I don't exist, is it true? Okay? This brings clarity, boom, clarity. And then you are on the subtle now. You work on the subtle. The more the thoughts are transparent, the beingness of who you are can shine through freely. Okay? When the mind rests, because you start to see that every thought is a dream, is an illusion, the thought itself, then you stop feeding the energy and you stop reacting to the thoughts like they are real. Because as, as long as you don't realize that every thought is not real, you, the mind out of habit would look for the reality, for the source of who you are in the thoughts. And it's not there. You cannot find the truth in thoughts. The truth is beyond any thought. So you have to see that the thought is not real, that the thought is just a dream. Because then it makes it lighter, it's not so meaningful, no matter what thought the mind is thinking. It's not even you thinking it. It's the mind out of habit thinking this thought. You're this pure awareness that is changeless. So it's really key to see that every thought is like a dream, an illusion. And you start even talking to the thought, ah, this is a dream, this is an illusion, oh! She's dreaming these ideas, okay. And wait a second, who am I? Am I the dreamer or I'm that silent awareness which is in the background that never changes? Hmm, okay, I am that. So slowly you stop losing interest in the dream like it is the reality, like it's the truth. And if something, if the mind reacts, say okay she's dreaming and she's reacting I have nothing to do with that I'm not this reaction I'm not the one who is dreaming it and then that's discrimination and the more you discriminate the thoughts the freer and lighter you start to experience because the mind get closer to the reflection of the light of who you are you're not even undoing it it's the mind undoing itself you are the beingness which never changes, omnipresent, which is always aware. What? Oh, I said, so your job is to get out of the way and then let. To remove, to undo, 
to clean however term one is resonating for one it doesn't matter it's removing the sludge that covers the water the sludge are the thoughts the beliefs and the water is the substratum the base that is underlines carries all this sludge the sludge are the thoughts that are appear to be real and the beingness of who you are is the water remove the sludge the water reveals itself so it's really key to work with the thoughts and it's good to concentrate because some thoughts don't cause you suffering I am a physical body cause me a lot of suffering I am and anything you attached a mother it's causing suffering because then you have all these responsibilities you can be a mother without the idea that you are a mother then you're free yes it doesn't contradict yet if you would think and you can choose a phrase I am pure consciousness or I'm ever free I'm changeless awareness and you concentrate that you cannot suffer by this thought it will concentrate the mind you're gonna be more on the subtle less identification with the thoughts about the body so you can experience lighter and as the mind gets sharpened then it's like one point in the in a in a white screen then suddenly the the screen can shine through and reveal You said not to get attached to the outcome, which I'm, I agree with, but I'm, it's interesting for me that um, before my spiritual awakening, my life was very simple and comfortable, and, and after it, uh, I've had many things come up to deal with that I never could have imagined that. Uh, on the surface, it seems to be a lot of struggle. And I'm hoping okay. at some point that will settle. Struggle, struggle is only because of identification with the thoughts. Struggle is, sits on either want, need, and should. I shouldn't have this experience. It shouldn't happen to me. Um, I know what's best for me. I want something else than what is. So it's always a conflict with the reality, with life, with what is. Therefore, also that causes emotion as well. Because anytime you feel angry, it's always because you believe that something should be different. My son should behave differently. When in fact, in reality, he behaved just the way it is. I should have more money when in fact I don't. I should be healthy when I'm ill. I, sh my, I should have more friends when I don't. This always cause emotion and always cause conflict. You have to undo this. This is the, the engine of the ego, the false identification. I want what I don't have and I don't want what I have. So it's never content and satisfied. And I invite the mind to work with the dissatisfaction to work with the negativity, to undo all of it. Because, question. yes, phrase and a question, phrase and a question or check. Okay, my son should behave differently. Now, am I dreaming it or not? So now I have to check what happens, how he behaves. He behaves just the way it is. So I'm imagining how he should behave. I'm dreaming right now. With my five senses open, I'm locked in a dream, in the mind. Also distinguish between suffering is only because of identification with thoughts. There is no suffering because of the objects of the world. So I can never struggle because of anything other than identifying with a particular thought or an idea. And the more you work with the thoughts, 
and you're less reactive to thoughts and sensation, which is objects of the world as well, then the more you can start experience who you are. And leave alone the, the past awakening. Because leave it alone, it's past. And awakening is every moment. Are you awake now? So you can be awake to the dream, means seeing the thoughts are not real. That's it, you're awake to the dream. Or you awaken fully to who you are, which is beyond the dream. Because otherwise you're holding to an experience that is no longer present, that's memory. And that causes you to compare, which causes you to struggle and suffer. It doesn't support the mind. So, if you stick with this inner journey, and you are working with the thoughts skillfully, the beingness who you are just shine forth more and more and more until it is permanent. And you have to work with the forgetfulness. You have to work with the identification, the false identification. And the wise brought, they brought it in a phrase, it's a, not being attached to future outcome means aversion to the enjoyment of the fruits of one's action now and later. This means, just to clarify, that every time the mind is attached to future outcome, I see it. It's not that I'm not supposed to get attached to a future outcome. Who I am never attached to future because it doesn't exist, it's omnipresent. It's just to see the habit of the mind, oh, I'm taking an action and I'm attached to future outcome. I'm taking an action, I'm attached to future outcome. Hmm, I'm still dreaming. I'm still ima imagining there is a future. Hmm, okay. That's okay. I'm watching. I'm watching the dreamer. I'm watching it. Be aware. Yes, watching it and question it. Is it me? And without this thought, who am I? Okay. You question it and you watch it. You're vigilant. You're alert. Fully. Every moment. Every thought. It's like the Course. It's very similar to the Course in Miracles. But there's actually a workbook where you're training your mind to watch your thoughts. Yeah. And the more you discriminate mentally, concentrate mentally, and inquire mentally, the more you are in the second floor. The more you are second floor, you would be aware of every thought that appears. And because you are the awareness that is always aware, it sees. And when the thought disappears, it sees only itself. Because it doesn't really see a thought. Awareness, pure awareness, is only aware of itself by itself. So it, it illuminates the thought, and when the thought disappears, you remain as awareness and you know that not from the mind because you are that. And uh, I'm just curious about you. Do you have, uh, do you have, I think you call them vasanas. Do you have thoughts that come up a lot? And, and uh, now, we clarify, who am I? When you ask, do I have? Mm -hmm. So from the mind's perspective, the vasanas still play themselves out. From who I truly am, it never moves. So if I think I have vasanas, I identify with the thoughts. Yet, I'm aware vasanas okay. appear, yet they are not they, me. They don't bother. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a desire for it to be different, because yeah. the moment no. I do, I resist it. Welcome everything. And the whole idea of letting go is, a, is an outdated concept. It's not true. 
If you see something that is not real, you cannot get attached to it. We go back to the dream and the waking state. So you have this experience. So it's not like alone is saying it. You dream at night, it appears totally real. You had a wonderful dream. The most amazing. Although the mind is restless, so it's not so amazing. Now you wake up from the dream. You realize it was a dream. Did you let go of it? You're saying there was nothing to let go of? Is that right? That's right. It was not real. How did you let go of something that is not real in the first place? So how does the mind let go of something that is not real in the first place? There is no real thoughts. There is not one thought that is real. So how can I let go of something that is not real? I have just to realize it's not real. And then the mind turns away into reality. I realized that initially uh, I, I was focused on having to let go and I, I and that was what scared me. But yeah, suddenly no. made, because if I tell you give me everything you have you'll be scared and if I'll take everything you have you'll be angry. Right. <laughs> Yet if you realize that everything you think you have is just imaginary, is all thoughts, ideas and beliefs and they're not real, what are you scared then? And when you realize it's not even you because you cannot lose you, when you start having glimpses of who you are, right. anything that is lost opens to experience more the reality of you which is infinite. So it's shifting your identification with that which can't be changed or lost or that's right. So it's it's not the identification, it's shifting the attention. It's where the attention is out to the objects of the world, bodily sensation, energy, thoughts, or who you are. Then it's truly is a, a tool. The mind ha got to have a tool. It got to be precise and it got to be sharp and be used like a knife. The tool is not emotional. A knife doesn't care what it's going to cut. Yet if it's not sharp and you take an, a dull knife and cut a, a tomato, doesn't work so well. Yet when you sharpen it, it cuts smoothly the tomato. So discrimination is the knife. It's the higher mind that discriminates. Get the mind out of the dream and disappears. It's like a medicine. The lower mind that identifies with the body is basically the disease. That's a disease. It's driven by fear, conflict. Yes? The, yeah, that's disease, negative, dark. The higher mind discriminate these ideas, this illusion. So it's the medicine. Yet even the medicine is not real because when the patient take the medicine because it has a disease, two things disappear the disease and the medicine. So the discrimination, concentration and inquiry into one's true nature is the medicine. Yet that's not the real thing. It's just a boat to take one, the mind to the other side of the river or to bring the mind back home. So it's not that you're going back home. No, you are already that which is ever home, never changes. It's the mind forgot it, went out, believing, creating an illusion, and in that illusion dreams that there is the, it's going to find the reality, and it's lost in a maze of imagination. And now it has to find its way back, and that's what knowledge does, to go back to you. Very much like what I've been studying. Amazing. Very good. 
as yeah. long as the tools are sharp the many paths many rivers reach the ocean yet when you reach the ocean the river loses its river nature all there is is the ocean so just make sure that the river you go you the mind takes can get you to the ocean because some rivers get dried up never get to the ocean then it's not good enough so it all depends on the maturity of the mind and the personality and the readiness for the mind to wake up from this dream and to experience who you are so I tell people whatever path you choose is the perfect right path for you just be aware that it can take the mind back home fully and not, not leave you in the dream still right, right well I am in the dream state but I recognize that it is a dream state so it's a funny place to be it's um, not enough what's that? it's not enough yeah, exactly. The mind has to... Yeah. If Once you start putting it into use, if you do, you would see for yourself. Ultimately is the experience one has. That's the ultimate, is the direct experience that one has. And then in the, in the mind is the direct knowledge that one has because the two ways we get knowledge indirect knowledge we hear it we read it direct knowledge we see it like with our eyes yet it's inside in the mind from within so it's not anymore somebody told me I know that's how it is internally yet to know who you are you can only experience you cannot understand it Right. It's interesting for me because I do have the visual experience. I see what is true. So I need to, I guess, allow it to be and, and not, I mean, I've been, my experience has been that I shouldn't be, be, be experiencing duality because I know it's not true. But that's a form of resistance. I see that. Who is thinking this idea? You or the mind? I think the mind. And who are you? You start checking it out. Who am I? Am I the one who's thinking or I am absence of thoughts? Am I changing or I am that changeless? Am I in a process or I never move? Who am I? Am I the voice who is talking to itself or the one who is silently aware? Who am I? And you check it out. You constantly, vigilantly examine. If, if you have the burning desire, the yearning for the mind to return back to who you are, and dissolve there, rest there. It has to rest there. And the more you, the mind rests there, the experience is infinite. And it's so profound that even when the mind comes out, there is the knowing that the experience of what appears to be real is not even close to reality. I invite the people to work with the illusion. Don't try to jump beyond it. Because the one who's trying to jump beyond it is the illusion itself. See it for what it is as an illusion. The thoughts. Even the I thought itself. And then once you directly experience who you are, you fix the attention on that. The sense felt experience of silence. Stillness. Hold on to that as much as possible. And then when the vasanas comes, the illusion appears. See it for as an illusion and shift the attention back to the presence of who you are. It's that simple. Okay. Um. And you're always welcome if we do a weekly open 
session or sharing? I would, I would love that, uh, to try the sharing thing on Gmail or however you do it. Yeah. Thank you very much. If you have questions or doubts or anything, you're always welcome to contact us and we'll do the best we can to be in communication and maybe clear some doubts so the mind can continue um, directing itself back home to you. Thank you so much for your time. You're most welcome.